Well, let's go live now to Liberal Senator and Shadow Communications Minister Sarah Henderson. She joins me here at the desk. I wanted to start by asking you about Alice Springs. Uh, you worked in the media, uh, you worked at the ABC. Mm. Um, there has been a lot of backlash from locals after it was reported that this meeting where thousands of people attended, that's no mean feat because Alice Springs has 24,000 total population thereabouts, so thousands of people attending this meeting. It was reported, uh, particularly on radio on the ABC, that this was about white supremacy and a meeting of white supremacists. How concerning is that to you? Because as I understand it, local ABC uh, reporters in Darwin and Alice are livid about this as well. Well, Laura, good morning. Great to join you. And I am very concerned about the ABC's coverage, not by the local ABC reporters, but by someone else, an Indigenous Affairs reporter, who gave a very one-sided view of what happened at the town hall meeting, which was called by small business people, by community leaders, by local residents to address the growing crisis in Alice Springs, including terrible violence, the treatment of children, the abuse of children. And for the ABC to depict this that some attendees were just um, white supremacists without telling the full story is absolutely disgraceful. And I note Michelle Rowland has said, oh, well, they can just issue their complaint to the complaints department at the ABC. Well, from the communications minister, that is not good enough. The bottom line is that the ABC has a statutory responsibility yeah. uh, to report the news impartially and accurately. It has monumentally failed to do so in this case. Yeah. And as we, as all Australians are depending on the ABC, of course, and other media organisations to tell the truth about what's going on, to understand the, the Albanese government's massive failures in not continuing the alcohol bans under the Stronger Futures legislation, things that are critical for this community mm. and other Indigenous communities, it is a shocking indictment on the ABC that they have so failed. And I am calling for an urgent apology and retraction and also a review of journalistic training yeah. and of course as we know the mayor of Alice Springs Matt Patterson, um, Patterson has he has um, demanded a retraction and is deeply upset. Okay so I, I didn't know there hadn't been a retraction uh, so far but look let me play devil's advocate here this reporter made a mistake we all make mistakes it, it can be a pretty tough gig when you're flying in and you're covering uh, a situation where emotions mm. are running high do you need to look at the abc's coverage of this in total i mean is it unfair just to look at one report and say you know that was wrong are you concerned about any well, other or just is it just one aspect? Unfortunately, the ABC has got a recent history of getting a lot of okay. things wrong and that's part of the problem. They have a statutory responsibility under the ABC Act to report the news impartially mm. and accurately. Yes, that's you, the point you made is absolutely spot on. Journalists do make mistakes. I worked at the ABC. We all make mistakes. But what I'm more concerned about is ABC senior management's defence. They don't seem to get it. They don't seem to understand that if a mistake has been made, it's got to be corrected. Yeah. There's got to be an investigation. The ABC's defence of this report was actually more concerning than the mistakes made by the journalists. So mm. there needs I mean, to be... You've got a... to back your staff in a way. Um, you understand that. Um, and support for a staff, pressure on one journalist can be a lot. Um, but is it more about the practices? Perhaps, you know, there was no safety net for this this reporter, the, the host of the radio program, I don't know, the producer of the radio program, allowing a one-sided report to go mm. through. And as I understand, there was no other interview disputing that. Well, look, there are certainly some failings at an editorial level. Yeah. Um, we can't, the ABC can't just let this one journalist be hung out to dry. But at the same time, ABC management have a responsibility, Laura. Mm. They must report the news accurately and impartially. And when they make them a mistake, it's got to be corrected. It's got to be retracted. There's got to be an investigation into what went wrong so that processes can be improved. If this journalist has been let down by inadequate training, not enough supervision, we need to understand that. Um, let's not forget, the ABC yeah. is funded by Australian taxpayers, more than $1.1 billion. It's a very important institution in our country. I'm a great supporter of the ABC, but it has got are to you, do better than this. Are you, are you still a great supporter of the yeah, ABC? Yeah, I am. I, I am a great supporter of the ABC. I worked there for nine years. I... 
Uh, I have a great love of the ABC. Um, many of the journalists work very hard and do a great job, but I think they are being let down at the moment by mm -hmm. a, a management team that is not paying enough attention to the importance of holding um, its journalists, its news divisions, to the very highest journalistic standards. Mm. OK, you're uh, going to meet with the ACCC today. One of the things on your radar is, uh, again, digital platforms and mm. the proliferation of scams. I don't know oh. anyone who hasn't uh, seen one of these scams. Uh, there hasn't been a scammer that hasn't attempted to, to scam someone else. How do you stop it? Look, it's absolutely horrendous. The ACCC estimates that Australians have lost $2 billion from scams, but it oh. could be up to $4 billion. What I'm really concerned about, Laura, they handed down a very significant report three months ago. I called for the government to take note of that report and to act urgently. The ACCC wants to see urgent reform on addressing scams uh, and, of course, other organisations are also calling for the Albanese government to address banking and financial organisation scams. The banks have got to do more, but so far this government yeah. is missing in action. When we're in government, uh, we took a whole range of actions to amend the Telco Act to address scams sent by telephone, yeah. by text message. But um, the Albanese government is doing nothing, has said nothing about these okay. urgent reforms. Just quickly, what more can the banks do? Well, one of the things that they could do is implement some technology so as to identify their customers. So if a customer gets a request to transfer money or do something, the customer has a way of Recovering. ensuring that they are actually dealing with the bank. And okay, so the yes. bank is not... The banks are not doing right. enough. Just to explain that to our audience, there's been scams at the moment where it's looked like a legitimate, for example, Commonwealth Bank That's uh, right. page. Mm. It has not been... Um, and people have been transferring, mm. customers of the bank have been transferring money on this mm. platform, but it's going straight into the scammers' pockets. That's right. So confirmation of payee right. technology yeah. is one option. There are a whole range of other things that the banks can do. Or I think it's step identifications, stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but whatever the options are, I mean, as I say, from this report, from this ACCC report, we have seen absolutely nothing said. Michelle Rowland is being completely silent, and meanwhile, Australians are suffering hand over fist. A young couple just um, a couple of weeks ago um, was speaking about the fact that they lost their life savings, uh, $100,000, because they thought they were doing the right thing, transferring their funds to another account because mm. they were, thought they were...